midsummer in the valley of the Humber. The salmon slowly move upstream. A warm, lazy day. Quiet wilderness. Peaceful farmland. At least it is in this part of the valley. However, downstream a ways, where the Humber enters Deer Lake, there was a wonderful hullabaloo going on. You sing along near a story about the way things go around and around. Nobody knows but the highway rolls on forever. But that old highway, it rolls on forever. Oh, she never would have done it if she hadn't got drunk, if she hadn't started running with a traveling man, if she hadn't started taking those crazy chances. Well, if you've been in the Humber Valley the first week in August the past few years, you know what this is all about. It's the Strawberry Festival. Strawberry costumes, strawberry shortcake, and crowds of people drawn here from all over to enjoy themselves, to have a feed of strawberries, and to celebrate the birth of a new industry in western Newfoundland, strawberry farming. This is down in the swamp land and the thing goes down The gate of eight and the bars don't close It's a real thing down in Louisiana Sandy Rideout is here. He's one of the war vets who returned from overseas to clear the forest and plow the land here nearly 40 years ago. The Strawberry Festival brings them all out. The young, the old, the local people, the passers-by. Some plan their holidays so that they can take in the festival. It's a bit of fun, a time to mingle, a time to celebrate the strawberry. Put your hands together. Woo! Just an ordinary story about the way things go around and around. Nobody knows what the highway goes on forever. Well, the road to Cormac doesn't go on forever. Now that the Trans-Canada has passed by the community, it's a dead-end road, a bit off the beaten track. Cormac hasn't changed much, though. Many of the homes built by the original settlers are still there. The fields that they cleared from the forest just after the Second World War are still in use. Most, if not all, the original settlers of Cormac are now retired. They got together during the Strawberry Festival last summer for a dinner, a sale of work, and to chat about old times. They were young in the 40s, young soldiers and sailors and their wives sent out to turn wilderness into farmland. Some of them are Newfoundland girls, other war brides from England, Ireland and Scotland. Their sons and daughters now work the fields and farms of Cormac. But farming has been a struggle here, as in other parts of the island. It's not been easy to scratch a living from the soil. Many farms lie abandoned. But while some fields have been reclaimed by the forest, Cormac is far from being a dying community. Root crops may have faded, Yet other agricultural enterprises have picked up. One of them, you guessed it, strawberries. People come here from all over at strawberry picking time. As you can see here on the Upwards Farm, the u pick system of harvesting has caught on in Newfoundland. 
You pick the berries yourself, whatever type you wish. Big ones, small ones, ripe ones, raw ones. Most pick enough to freeze for the winter or to bottle into jam. At $1.75 a basket, it's a pretty lucrative business. Oh, you got us for there. Have you got the 450? Oh, boy. It was here at Upwards Farm that the strawberry industry was born out this way. Pierce Upward grew strawberries on these same hills way back in 1953. Now his son Bruce has taken over. Well, Bruce, uh, what made you get into the strawberry business? Well, uh, our family's been in the strawberry business since, uh, I believe it was 1953. Your father started it, eh? My father started it, yes, and when I took over the farm, of course, I decided to enlarge my strawberry operation slightly. So this is really nothing new for the upwards? Nothing new for the upwards. Tell me about the strawberry business now. What sort of a business is it? Is it an easy one to, to manage and to operate? Strawberry business is not easy. Uh, you have to have many, many uh, ideas about how to uh, increase your production per acre. And another very important factor is you know how to have to know how to handle people. What is the problem on dealing with people and just organizing the picking itself or in satisfying their, their, their requirements for berries? Satisfying finding their requirements is important, but not ruining the strawberry field at the same time, if you know what I mean. Now, your, your wife pretty well runs to you because you're busy at other things too, I believe. Well, she does because right, uh, right now, for instance, I'm in the hay and it's just I just can't be in two places at one time. Well, there are cars coming in and trucks coming in behind us now, so it looks like it's getting set for another busy day. Well, it gets up uh, around 10 o'clock, people start rolling in. Tell me where they come from now. You said you had a phone call last, last night, people checking. Well, well just last night, there's, there's people from Little Bay Islands. Phone said they were coming across on the ferry, and they wanted to know if the field was open this morning. And they're here now. We have our old established customers, and, and new ones are picking up all the time. Do you see it expanding now, or is this as far as you're going to go? No, uh, this is as far as we're going to go. We're, we're satisfied with uh, 12 acres, and some people are going to expand, but we're not. Where do you see the industry going? Can the industry itself expand? I think the industry right now could double. I believe it could. Uh, not with the people of the West Coast, if we were to hit the market in St. John's and elsewhere. So it's a promising business right now? It's a promising business right now, yes, sir. <laughs> Next winter, eh, when you're eating the jam, you'll see yourself on TV. <laughs> Once it was vegetables the upwards grew. Now it's strawberries and broiler chicken. Well, they will be broilers in a few weeks. We Newfoundlanders have a great appetite for strawberries, but we also like our fried chicken. We have uh, 41,000 birds here, and they're two days old. Now, how long do you keep them, and when, when do you market them, and how big are they then? Well, on uh, average, they're about 42 days old when they, when they go to market and they're about four pounds. At all times, it's a risky business. Uh, there's always the threats of uh, power outages or strikes or problems at the plant, things like this. Uh, you have to be uh, watching it all the time. Have you ever had any major disasters here with this? Yes, uh, in this particular barn here, I came out one morning and there were 32,000 birds dead. That was a big blow. Well, I did have some insurance, but it didn't cover everything, of course. And it took me about a year to get back on my feet again. You know? I guess this is your main business now. Is it uh, you've gotten away from vegetables completely? Well, I'm away from vegetables, but we're still into strawberries, as you saw yesterday, and hay production for the dairy farmers in the area. Hay for the dairy farmers. It's hard to believe. Not many years ago, there weren't any dairy farmers here at all. Now there are more full-time dairymen in Cormac than there are full-time vegetable farmers. The land that once grew potatoes is now feeding cattle.
Not all farmers have given up on vegetables, though. The great rolling fields on the Rideout farm are still in production. Melvin Rideout, who's now taken over from his father, Sandy, admits vegetable farming is an endless task. A lot of work. More so, say, than dairy or broilers, where you go in and you feed your chicken or, you know, milk your cows in the morning, and you got, you know, a good bit of free time, whereas root crop is, uh, you know, from time the snow goes into spring till the dry shed the garden in the fall, you know, it's a full-time job. And, of course, there have been a lot of marketing problems, too, haven't there? Uh, there have been, yeah. We haven't had it too bad, you know, on the marketing end, but uh, a, a lot of people, uh, you know, that's, I'd say, one of the reasons why they diversified and went into other things that... Uh, they did have a job marketing. Why have you stuck with it, Melvin? Uh, I, I don't know. I just, you know, like root crops is what, we, what I started off with. And, you know, I just haven't, uh, you know, even thought about going into anything else. You know, unless it's an addition. I, if I went into anything else, it certainly wouldn't be at the expense of giving up root crops. You haven't been tempted to get into the strawberry business like so many other people? No. No, I grew a few strawberries a few years back, maybe seven or eight years for our own, you know, use, and, you know, it was according to that patch dwindled away. The last couple of years we went and got them out of you pick ourselves. <laughs> Vegetables, broiler chicken, strawberries. Farming certainly has diversified out here in this part of the island. But the growth of the dairy industry, too, has been spectacular. And it's not only the sons and daughters of the pioneers who are in the milk business. Building a dairy herd was a lifetime dream of Jack Taylor, who was a bit of a pioneer himself. You moved here from Corner Rook years ago. You, you've always wanted to be farming, I suppose. Yeah, it's something I've always wanted to do. Uh, it was a long time before I got around to it, but uh, I came here 12 years ago and started out with, the, there's not the only bush here when I come here, and uh, so we've just, what we've got, we've built it ourselves up to this point, and we intend to to keep building it for a few years yet. Farming has diversified quite a bit here in the past few years, hasn't it? Yeah, it seems to be a bit of a shift. Uh, I don't know, some fellows are sort of giving up the traditional vegetable part of it and uh, seems to be moving into, into livestock, uh, dairy in particular, and strawberries have really come a long way in the last little while, so uh, it's, it's, it's looking good, I think. Yeah. In Cormac in August month, Everyone brings up the subject of strawberries. But little wonder. There's a festival going on, remember? Swing that girl, then you promenade again. This land is your land. This land is my land. This land was made for you and me. And I walked all around that corner. She saw your pen. Men start right and turn and once around that said, Turn your partner by the left. The corner box and out. Hey, pull her by, go back home and see you saw your pen. The corner girl left out of and go home and then you swing. Swing that girl, then you promenade and sing. This land is your land. This land is my land. This land was made for you and me. Yes, this land was made for you and me. Well, here we go again. At Reedville this time, just a few miles from Cormac. This is the farm of Jerry and Gerard Bouillou. Jerry is from here. Gerard is from New Brunswick. A mechanical engineer by profession, he came here, fell in love with Jerry and with this piece of land and with the art of growing strawberries. He discovered that Newfoundlanders have a great passion for berry picking. Uh, it seems like people from Newfoundland really love picking berries and, and if bake apples are this big, if you've got strawberries that big, it just seems to be that much more fun to pick them, you know, so. People don't travel as much as 300 miles, and we like to try to, uh, they want to make a family outing. They'll, uh, they'll come in, pick sometimes uh, all the berries they'll need for the winter, and, and spend an afternoon, and 
on my farm I have swimming and picnic tables and I, I try to accommodate, I allow children to come in and pick and I try to make it more of a family outing than, than just a, a straightforward harvest. You can pick berries, you can buy berries, or you can just enjoy the sun and the water. And that's what it was like last year here in the Humber Valley. People flocked to the Yupik farm. They came from all over, from Burgio and St. John's, from St. Anthony and Labrador. A kind of strawberry fever had swept the land. As one field was picked, another was ripening for the next day. They're ripening pretty fast right now with the warm weather. And uh, I'm pretty pleased with the crop this year now. I'll be opening this tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. So even in two days it comes back? Oh yes, every two days, yes. And some fine berries here? Yeah, I was just uh, uh, going to show you how they grow. Uh, generally, there's a, every plant will produce a, a fruit cluster. And early in the spring, the very first berry that, that comes off is one in the center. That's called the primary berry. And uh, it is normally larger than the others, and that's why sometimes you have large and small berries. Uh, then after that, you get two of these berries. These are called the secondaries and the tertiaries. So you come with one primary, and then two, and then four of these little ones. And what happens as the season progresses, say the first week we'll pick all the primary berries, and they're the largest. These are about 75% as large as a primary berry, and these ones are about half as big as the others. So sometimes you'll, you'll notice that the berry size goes down through the season, and uh, that's the reason why. So that's how we can take one particular variety of strawberries and spread the season for about, oh, 25 or 30 days for one variety. Myself, I don't, I don't weigh the, uh, the strawberries. I go by the, by the box. And uh, th they run here roughly between uh, $1.75 for uh, you pick and $2 picked. And that price is pretty well the same uh, throughout. Some go by weight and, you know, there's minor differences. But in general, everybody has the same price. The thing about you pick, as you mentioned earlier, is that every berry in that basket is your choice. When, when you get a basket that's been flowing in here from from Nova Scotia. You don't know how old those strawberries are, and you don't know what's underneath them. So here you, you can fill your basket up, uh, you know, within reason, and, and nobody says anything. They're custom strawberries. Well, that's true. Uh, you know, you can have square ones, round ones, you can have big ones, little ones. It's, it's totally up to the customer the, the strawberries he wants. Your choice of material. You can have the raw ones if you want them. <laughs> That's not that heavy. You need to carry that. Well, Gerard, how do you know now when to irrigate this field? Well, the, the soil's fairly dry here right now. This is called a, a moisture tester, and it'll also tell you the pH and tells you whether or not you need lime. So you just put this in the soil, and you let it set for a little bit, and uh, there's two circuits in it, and uh, when you press this one, so it's reading there 35% moisture. So that means that this field could use about three quarters of an inch of rain. That'd be two hours with the irrigation system. You need about an inch a week to keep the strawberries growing at all times. So you're going to turn it on now to see, see sure. how it works? Sure, yeah, yeah, because uh, right now, uh, even though we got a sunny day, uh, they're not really growing at their peak potential. So you got to keep the soil uh, greater than 50% moisture. A turn of the switch and the irrigation system started up. Gerard was quite proud of it, and well he should be. It's an impressive sight. Well, Gerard, there's quite an irrigation system you've got here. This is something new for you? Oh, yes it is. I just, I just had it this year. Uh, uh, I had it all set up in a, in a field uh, waiting for frost, because it's a frost protection device. And, and I bought an electronic frost alarm and I had it hooked up to a horn, so I was ready every night this spring to wake up and turn it on at midnight, but it never, it never went off, so. I, I can see you're using, still using your engineering background as a farmer. Well, it helps a little bit with uh, pumping water, but uh, one year, we normally have a, a, a killer frost about one year in five, so that particular year she'll come in pretty handy. Now, how does water protect you from frost? Well, uh, where the water is, is uh, being poured onto the field, it's not frozen yet, so it takes a lot of, it, it more or less heats up the, the plants 
as it's spraying the water on. So it protects them with a coating of ice. And uh, while you're pouring water onto the plant, it can't go below 32 degrees, but if you, or Fahrenheit, but if you get uh, two degrees of frost on the flowers, they'll all die and you lose your crop. So it's, it's a handy little device at certain times. Mm -hmm. You haven't had any problems with frost for the past few years, have you? Uh, four years ago we had uh, quite a loss. We lost about half our crop due to frost. And that could be a sizable loss to a farmer? Well, I would say uh, a good frost uh, could cost us, say, $10,000 in one evening. So this is a big investment, but it could pay off very Well, uh, it will some year. It, it just takes a lot of time. This year, every time I went to use it for irrigation, it's rained the next day, so <laughs> it may not pay for itself this year. And of course it helps the plants grow too. Well, uh, I'm irrigating there now to, to keep the water in the soil at an optimum level so that I can promote early runner growth. This is a new field with 30,000 plants and if I can get the new runners out this month or say by August 15th, I would uh, be able to get a, a larger yield next year off that field. But what does all this mean? Is this blossoming little industry just a flash in the pan? Will it fade and die like so many others? Or does it have real potential? But right now, uh, I'm the president of the Strawberry Growers Association. We have 22 growers in the province. And uh, for the last two years running, our industry's expanded 100% each year. And next year, we'll have uh, 200 acres for picking and last year, this year we just had 100 and the year before that 50 acres. But I would say eventually we'll, we'll go up to about 500 acres of strawberries in Newfoundland because uh, right now there's, there's four fairly large strawberry farms in this area and, and it's just now that we're starting to ship strawberries to the rest of the province. And uh, where strawberries may not grow too well in the east where they're plagued with uh, no snow in the winter and in central where they're plagued with the, the early frost or the late spring frost, I should say. So we would be able in this area to feed uh, quite a lot of the Newfoundland market. Is that as far as it can go, the Newfoundland market? Uh, well, not really, because strawberries uh, start to ripen from Florida northwards, and we're the last ones on the line. We're, we're the only people that can have strawberries in September. So if the industry really took off, there's no reason why we couldn't be shipping uh, strawberries down towards New York. So agriculture is really changing over here, isn't it, in Cormac? I think you'll find that uh, th there's a lot of different crops we haven't tried here that will grow into Newfoundland. It seems that even though you mention, say, apples or strawberries, well, just the strawberries, there's 300 kinds of strawberries. Every kind has its own uh, good qualities and bad qualities. So if you had that many varieties, all you got to do is find the right kinds that will grow here. And, and treat them the right way, the type of fertilizer they need and the way they've got to be planted and learn to live with them. And, 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 uh, and I think you could grow quite a few things here economically once you look at it. Every cent I've ever made as a professional engineer for 10 years has gone into my farm. It takes a lifetime to build a farm. I, I've got uh, about 40 acres cleared and I've been here for, for about eight years. And uh, where I have a little boy there, he's only a year old, well, Maybe if he decides to go farm, and well, some of this work will be carried on to the next generation. It's kind of nice, you know, to be able to pass something on to the next crowd. So you've got quite a commitment to this place. Oh, I won't leave here. You wouldn't drive me out of here with a big stick. I love it here. <laughs>